This quick video will help you find the quadratic equation when you are given two roots, whether they are real roots or complex roots. To review, what you know is that when you are given two roots, the equation is pretty fast if you can find the sum and the product. When you write the equation, it's y equals x squared and the opposite of the sum times x plus the product. That means for each of these examples, we will need to find both the sum and the product in order to write the quadratic equation. Now the sum for each of these examples is easier because it's fast. The sum of two real roots, 6 plus a negative 11, is going to be equal to a negative 5. And we notice that these examples that you're given in question 2 and 3, these are complex conjugate pairs because you have the same first term, but you have the opposite second term for each of them. So positive 3i versus negative 3i, and a positive 2i and a negative 2i which is really nice when we're trying to find the sum because the complex part is just going to cancel each other out. So the sum for the second example is just 4, and the sum for the third example is going to be a negative 10. Now the product for each of these is going to take more work. You're going to have to use the generic rectangle for the second and third example. However, the product for the first example, since they are just real roots, 6 times a negative 11 is a negative 66. So, let's focus more on example number 2 and 3 using our generic rectangle. As we set up example number 2, we will put 2 plus 3i across the bottom, and we'll put 2 minus 3i across the top. So as we multiply each of these boxes, that means that we'll have 4 on the bottom left, we'll have a negative 6i, and then we'll have a positive 6i in the uh, diagonals, and in the top right we're going to have a negative 9i squared. As we take a look, we can see that negative 6i and 6i will cancel. We also know, or hopefully remember, that i squared is equal to a negative 1. So this is really a negative 9 times a negative 1, which is equal to a positive 9. And this product all adds up to be equal to 13. For our final example, we put negative 5 plus 2i across the bottom, negative 5 minus 2i across the left, and then we start to multiply. So you have a positive 25 on the bottom left, you have a negative 10i, and you have a positive 10i, and then in the top right, you're going to have a negative 4i squared. And as we look at simplifying, your 10i and negative 10i cancel again. i squared is equal to a negative 1, so you have a negative 4 times a negative 1, which is equal to a positive 4. So 25 plus 4, when you add those together, is equal to 29 for our product. And there we have our sum and our product of each of our two roots given for the examples. Now that we have our sum and our product, and we can remember what our simple setup is in order to write our equation, we have x squared and the opposite of the sum times x plus the product, we can write these equations pretty quickly. So your first equation, the quadratic equation from those two roots of 6 and negative 11, your equation is going to be y equals x squared plus 5x minus 66. For the second example, your equation will be y equals x squared minus 4x plus 13. And for the final example, your equation will be y equals x squared plus 10x and then plus 29. And that's all there is to it when you're trying to write the equation when you're given two real roots. Now we can take this to the next level if we add a third root into the example. So for our third problem, I'm going to add in another root where it says x equals 1. And we're going to take this to the next level. That tells us that we have a factor since this is a real root, right? So x equals 1, and then you have two complex roots. Now this quadratic of x squared plus 10x plus 29 is the quadratic that comes from these two complex conjugate pairs. And so... As we set up our factor that's remaining, we know that that is a, going to give us a factor of x minus 1. So what we want to do is multiply that quantity times x minus 1. So if we zoom in on this problem, what we're going to have to do is multiply with a 3 by 2 generic rectangle. We'll multiply x squared plus 10x plus 29 times the quantity x minus 1. And when you multiply those across the bottom row, you get x cubed and then a positive 10x squared, and a 29x across the bottom. And then on top, when you multiply, you'll get negative x squared, a negative 10x, and a negative 29 from that product. So when you combine your like terms, you'll end up with y equals 
x cubed, a positive 9x squared, a positive 19x, and a negative 29. So that would be, if you have the roots of negative 5 plus 2i, negative 5 minus 2i, and an x equals 1, this is the third degree tri polynomial that will give you those roots.